Hello, welcome to another episode of me sitting in the garage talking nonsense. Um, but in this one, I'll be talking about Imperial Skies, which is a war game which I wrote myself. It's a uh, book format, it's available in PDF and in hard copy, which you can purchase on the Brigade Models website. It uses a, a set of airships uh, such as these, and I put the setting in a period kind of World War One, extending into the sky essentially, because obviously we had zeppelins in that period, and uh, this uh, war game setting continues that theme and takes World War One into the skies. So rather than a 1918 finish, it uh, continues with sky-based battles. Uh, however, the models themselves could be used in an earlier setting, and I don't lock that down in the game. So if you wanted to play a game where the setting was you know 20, 30 years before that in the 19th century, you could do that as well. So you don't have to be stuck into my history piece. Uh, the rule book itself, um, some of you will be familiar with it already. It's it's sort of full colour, it has lots of um, guides for in terms of how the, um, the rules work. It's got statistics and it also has at the back, uh, if I can find it, sort of a, a lengthy painting guide which I've put in there as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dive over to the smaller camera here to show you a couple of miniatures and uh, if I just click a button I can magically make that happen. Ta-da! So these are in the German range and uh, they're on my little wooden rotating stump. If I bring them in you can see how the decking and guns are sort of painted on. I've given this one a sort of dazzle camo style by using masking tape on the side. The, uh, the larger Zeppelin there is a complete resin body and uh, you can see the sort of little details on the side. That's a decal. Uh, that's a decal on there as well. Uh, I use Gundam decals actually, and um, also on the on the rear fin, you can see some. Those are from I think they're called Dom's decals, sort of the the Iron Cross style one. The front of the airship here was completed with masking tape, which kind of created that striped look, and um, it was the first time I was doing it, so. It's a reasonable effort, I think. I quite like the pale blue and the sort of purple bright colours. Inspired, I think, by World War One aircraft, the very bright um, fighters that they had where they used different bright colours on the camo before they realised that they needed to keep things a little bit paler and more camouflaged. And uh, so I quite like that style. It could have been done with more finesse, I think, but it's OK. So these are just example miniatures from uh, Imperial Skies the game and I've got these on bases from a company called Corsec Engineering which is an American based company that create this sort of multi-part kits. Let me move that one out of the way and by that I mean the bases are built up of this bottom section which comes in different sizes. I use larger hexes for models which are larger and more prone to topple and uh, then you have that central column which also comes in different sizes. And then finally on the bottom, if I get that pointer, you can see here I have the small, what am I going to call it? Clegg nut. <laughs> now it's a little um, small screw on piece that is built to fit the thread on those. So you sort of bolt it on. And uh, you can see those individually here they're sold separately. The alternative uh, to screwing them onto the shaft as you can see here is to use the magnetic toppers and the magnetic toppers you can again they're screw on but uh, obviously because this is metal it just clips on and then bosh you put it on there and it's on the model and it's quite sort of trouble free really in terms of it's strong enough well, I mean if I wobble that hard it's not coming off so there you go that's a Zeppelin from the German faction and uh, which I airbrushed and then did some washes on I kept the nice bright fin color because I thought that looked quite distinct having the white fin and then did a sort of gray hull underneath there and you can see 
It has the sort of cannons on the side. So, what about the game then? One of the principles of the game in the movement is that we use these movement rulers, which can be purchased from brigade models. And depending on the speed of the vessel, you can shift around here. And also the hull size, you can shift your hex around this. So it's quite important to have a, a straight front to your hex so you can follow the rulers around. And there's five different sizes of these rulers. I've just got a couple here out for an example. This would be the very small sort of patrol boat size turning circle. Obviously the smaller vessels turn much more rapidly and uh, that sort of allows you to get that tighter corner and then maybe present a broadside to some models a bit easier. So that's one of the basics of, uh, of the movement, but I shall now dive over into the rule book to show you a bit more. So I will first of all just need to switch this to the rule book, which I've got. So this is Imperial Skies itself, and I can page that, well, intentionally blank page there accidentally. We've got the contents and details on the game models. The rules itself, we've got some nice artwork which I had done representing this one, the Dresden, which is one of the uh, models in the, rule, in, in the rule book, and also one of the models produced by Brigade, which sort of gives you that exploded view. There's a couple of sections where they've got that sort of detail in there, and also the rules themselves have some reasonably good artwork running throughout. As you can see, these nice sketches which are sort of period-based. And there's another one of those cutaway images as well in there. So if I switch out and just talk about the movement then, I believe I can find the uh, movement tab somewhere in here. Albeit a bit small to see. I shall skip through rapidly. There we go. So you can see again here showing the different sizes of ships and giving you an idea there of the different hulls. So the A-class hulls are the smaller ships, which are the patrol boat size right up to the larger battleships which would use the E-class ruler which is not as uh, a tight a turning circle. Speed is also important but not uh, vital in the sense that you could use the say that E-class ruler there, uh, this one, you could use that one if you were just moving slowly at say three inches you wouldn't need to go right to the end of it you just use it as far as you need to go down the length of the ruler and you can use multiple ones so if for the smaller patrol boat here, it was maybe it had six inches movement, it could in fact do multiple turns to get the right angle. By that I mean it could turn to port and then, then turn to starboard afterwards. So you've got that sort of ability to, to snake, I think is the best way to describe it. So here's just an example of that movement. So you can see the movement is in inches and how you place the ruler up against the start of the base and each step along the ruler is an inch. So an airship does not need to move the full distance on the ruler when you're doing its movement and activating it. And there's some live examples of one of the German ships there making that movement. So some of the other features that are in here, I've got the statistics, which I think that's probably worth showing. So we'll go on to this one here. The cards are double-sided. In fact, I can show you one of these cards live so you get a view for that. So, I've got these in these plastic sleeves and the plastic sleeves are by um, a company called Fantasy Flight. They're the Euro style size sleeves. And the reason I've put them in there is that you can use um, sort of wipe off a wall pen to mark the damage onto the airships. And yeah, they are they're two-sided the idea with this I wasn't uh, I don't think anybody's really used it but the idea was that you could mark on your damage and then flip the card over so your opponent wouldn't necessarily see if you've got a large fleet which one of the uh, ships was damaged so meaning they'd need to remember during the game some people like to do that so that's why I sort of made the main damage grid on the back and the uh, the guns on that side but also the guns can be referenced on that back side as well too. So that's the profile cards. They're also printable on demand on the Wargames Vault website. 
And if I go back into, well, oh, wrong one. There we go. So back into the actual cards here, and I can talk through the different sections. So if you start over on that left side on the blue card, you've got a, a number of hull points there. And you've got the ruler type that it's using, class D, that's its turning. And then the three different gun types are the small uh, deck gun type um, gunnery, which is it's got five of, that's five dice. It's got 12 of the big bore heavy guns and they've got that range of 30 inches and then it's got the uh, 20 inch range medium bore guns which it's got eight of and that number in that box basically represents the range and the number of dice rolled. Now if I flip back out again to the camera I've had these perspex rods made up in the different sizes so essentially if I go back out wide Here's a 10 inch perspex rod and then 20 and then I'd have a 30 done as well and that's basically for the three uh, ranges because they're pretty much static in the rules that you have those three ranges. And one of the things I wanted to do with these to make it easy to use and so the reason I had these done was that so that these ranges could be easily used in the game you wouldn't need to use tape measures. Um, all the time and also tape measures interestingly enough if I go down to that close in tape measures have a horrible habit the uh, the metal ones of uh, attaching themselves to these magnets on here so using the perspex rods after a few games where we were trialing and found that uh, our tape measures kept locking on to the bases um, was very useful and you can see the smaller ones here and that brings me just briefly actually to measurement in the game. All measurement is from the central post. And, uh, and again, there's um, firing arcs off the side of here, but um, those firing arcs are leveled from the center post. And the idea being for the purposes of measurement in the game, it wouldn't penalize people with hugely long ships. I know they normally have more damage and therefore are easier to target. Um, however, um, to avoid any confusion it's all pillar to post so to speak so if you were firing from one airship to another like these two you would be measuring between those two posts and if you use these nice easy sort of reference rods if you have some made up you can do that now Corsec engineering I realize now I am diving all over the place with this conversation but Corsec also do these aluminium uh, measuring sticks and they do the separate sections so you could buy these as well and have them made up in the different sizes needed from Corsec the same people that make the um, the bases too so diving back into the cards again so on the right hand side here with the the large damage grid in the red area you can see there's a minus figure at the end of each one. That minus figure is the minus to the number of guns of each class when you have that damage box filled in. So when that airship takes its first five damage, it'll be minus one. It should only have 11 of the big guns, seven of the medium and four of the small. So it loses one size of each class. Also, over on this side, you can see that's the engine, so that's its speed of six inches, which is for this rather large Bembo. Um, that would be reduced to five as well from, from six. Uh, nothing can go below one, so if you have at least one class, uh, one dice in each class of weapon, you, you always end up with at least one of that gun left over, even when you've taken the minus five here. Uh, the idea being there's at least some sort of representation of that left on there um, in in battle. The other section at the top here shows the engineering repair boxes. The larger the ship, the larger the repair crews they have, and this one has three. And during the game you can recover by taking an action instead of a movement or a firing. You can assign an engineering crew tick one of those boxes to exhaust it and then you roll a d6 and half it so it's a, 
a D3 essentially, that is what that's called, and that would allow you to repair that number of boxes immediately. Which can help if you're just near one of those threshold points, if you were just filled in the minus three, and then on your next go you decide to use a repair, you might just take yourself over a threshold of giving yourself more guns to use. Which is especially important if you're doing a broadside, uh, because on the broadside you roll the maximum number of Okay, right. Other areas in the book that are worth looking at. Um, I have a painting section. Uh, this nearly killed me, actually, just in terms of if you're thinking of writing a war game of your own, which everybody seems to want to do these days, uh, which is because it's easy. You can go for it, write it, and put it up on the uh, War Games vault. Uh, I nearly killed myself doing this painting guide. I know it's probably not that much use to people because you can paint already, but I thought I'd put the guide in because I didn't do that in my last set of rules, Grunts 15 mil. I ended up missing out any kind of painting guide and I, I felt I'd missed an opportunity to share models and how I paint them. So I stuck it in this one and you can see all the different stages of painting that it takes you through, um, including what paints are used on these particular ships. So you can see it goes into quite nice detail, very high res images used on there as well throughout. And I'm doing the edging on a Japanese deck on that one. So yes, yeah, so I hadn't intended to go through the play of the rules in absolute detail in this. I was just wanted to give you an overview, really. Um, but I can show you here the section in a bit more detail on how you use the uh, guns on there. And essentially, what happens is, at the base range on a small bore, which is the two yellow gun type here, only does a damage on six and only out to the 10 inch range. When, you, when you're up onto the four size medium bore guns it does five or six it will do a point of damage up to 10 inches but out to 20 it'll damage on a six and then on the big bore you can see it'll damage on four five or six in close range up to 10 inches but way out up to 30 inches it only scores a damage point filling in one of those boxes I showed earlier on the card. Uh, it does that when it's out at that 30 inch range. The other thing to note is that when you roll a six, it's exploding dice, the classic exploding dice style. So you would end up uh, re-rolling that dice again. Now jumping out to the table here, if I remove those, I've got some dice here. And again, part of the design the idea was to keep the dice the same colours, well that's from another game system, to keep the dice of the same colour matching the, the gun. So if I was firing heavy bore, I would roll red, orange for the medium and yellow for the small bore guns. The idea being very quick reference, I use the same colours on the cards uh, representing those guns as I do on the dice. And if you purchase the official dice, they've got the six um, represented by a little sort of bomb there from the World War One sort of period. Uh, well, actually, it's just the Imperial Skies logo, <laughs> which is on there. So that one is actually being a six. I would get to re-roll a six. Any six rolled, you'd get to re-roll, and then that's not doing damage the second time. Um, but again, depending on the range, the medium ball can do a point of damage on five or six at close range. If you rolled the six again you'd get to roll it again. So you get that sort of multiple exploding dice theme going on there. So that's the dice. Back to the uh, rule book briefly then. So again, there are some gun dice modifiers. There's crossing the T. Uh, there's a forward arc or rear arc firing, which you half the number of points in, the, in that gunnery. You've got a minus per threshold on the damage trap, which I showed and explained earlier when you fill those damage boxes in. And there's cloud or smoke uh, obscure and firing at ground targets with normal guns if you haven't got sort of monitor style downward facing guns. There's a big minus because the, uh, the guns are generally built to fire at other airships on a reasonable similar height to them altitude wise. What I've done with rules, you may ask, talking about altitude, um, there are um, rules for fighters as well, uh, so you can launch fighters, and that's a bit of detail there on that crossing the T. 
but there's optional rules in here to cover the uh, firing at altitude so you can change between altitude you can have on the ground low and then sort of battle um, altitude which is sort of medium altitude and then high so in a normal game if you're new to the game you'd essentially be playing at battle altitude and not using the different um, altitudes because it represents extra um, extra detail that you have to think of I think if you're starting the game don't go for the altitude add that later however I, I wanted altitude because I wanted detail in there in regard to the length of time it takes to launch an airship from from the ground and also just an ability to have sort of diving down from a greater height movement and different modifiers based on firing up or down when you're at, uh, using the altitude rules. Also cloud cover, if you had a cloud you might put it at medium height when you're starting the game so you could burst out of the cloud cover or down through it, gaining cover as you change altitude. So those kind of uh, details in there. And dropping bombs, so if you want to hit ground targets you can do that as well. I think at the start of this video I had a, a picture up, which I'll fire up again, of an Imperial Skies game. There we go. And you can see some of the really nice ground scale terrain from Brigade Models again. This is their sort of Spanish style. We had a Mediterranean uh, battle. And you can see here these ground targets represented and we would be bombing those. So we have those bombing rules in there so you can introduce some ground targets. The statistics for a few um, ground batteries as well so they can fire back and also mobile artillery types but I haven't gone into the fuller detail on the ground movement or ground vehicles like tanks yet that might come later if I do an Imperial Territories uh, version of Imperial Skies for more ground based combat and blend the two rule sets. So I've got some pictures here actually of some other airships and I thought I'd share those and just talk about them these are some very nice American airships. These are painted uh, by a friend of mine called Jonathan Rogers. Ping into focus now. And you can see the level of detail that Jonathan's gone up to uh, on his airship. That's taken a lot of craft there. But if I zoom into different areas and talk about it, he's used a different company there for the little deck lifeboats, which you can see. And he's glued those on with some plastic sprue as well, which you can see. But the actual lifeboats come with a kit as well, so they probably came with those um, carriages that connect them on there. He's also put some small deck guns there, you can see a very small one. And totally gone to town on the rigging, which, which makes the uh, airship look stunning really. And this is in his American Great White Fleet. The other thing that Jonathan does, which is worth noting when you're buying these airships, is he puts larger fins on uh, to bring them, to sort of pop them out. And you can see beneath here on that back um, rear side fin, you can see before Jonathan had put this large panel on, it only has a very small sort of fin on the back of the uh, airship. So adding those extra fins, which gets the, uh, obviously for older people like me, mid to late 40s it gets harder to see these small airships when they're on the battlefield so by having the larger fins as an identifier it does it does look rather nice it does sort of look nicely scaled to the to the game as well so if i can bring up some other interesting actually there we go there's a picture of jonathan himself as well so just to wind him up when he's watching this too there's a there's a photo of him he's the guy that paints all sort of those uh, airships in amazing detail and um, we also have a couple of other photos in here that really annoyed now that I'm using this iPad to show these pictures and for some reason it has to download the picture taking about five minutes to do so in the process. Here we go, what are these? Okay, these are the new Spanish ships from Brigade Models. It is visible on there so you can see that central decking raised area and that's a feature of these Spanish airships which are rather nice in my view. Just got a few pictures of those and then there's some more of Jonathan's again there you can see again that amazing rigging on that large one there the other thing which is worth noting is that Jonathan and many other players do is they don't lock themselves into one particular faction uh, for the models they're going to use so you might 
use a different range of models for different uh, factions just to mix them up a bit. And I, I tend to stick to the, the nationality. So if I purchase the brigade models, German airships, I'll use them for my German fleet only. But Jonathan here mixes them up depending on, on what he's doing. So there you go. Those are actually the American ones there. And there might be another picture, picture coming up soon. So there's some of that nice terrain again. And there we all are um, on the edge of the table. And you can see my cloth there. I use a, a large cloth which has printed terrain on. The benefit of using a cloth is that you don't then have things that you can sort of trip over with your bases. They're all solid and on there. So I could browse through our old photos for ages. Well, here's something that's worth showing. This is where I, I had some of these uh, acrylic bases made to take the cards so I could easily see the fleet and also flip over the counters when they have fired and moved. And the other thing you could note there is that if you have a look at that very small number in that corner, 14, I would then represent that on the table as well by putting the similar number on there and that's a really nice quick reference way especially when you're running a fleet where you might have six or so destroyers it's very difficult without putting a number on a base and a number on the card to see which ship is which so when you're recording damage you could make a mistake we still make mistakes because we're getting old but uh, it's a lot easier when you when you do put the number onto the bottom there in fact, I've got a tray of those. So if I switch back to the live camera now. Oh, there's two things I can show here, actually. The first thing, whoa, they've just scattered all over the floor. But the first thing, these, this is a pack of the Fantasy Flight sleeve covers all over the floor now. But as you can see, the sleeves are just the right size, which for the printed cards that I've had done. So the nice uh, piece about that is that you can slot them in and then use the damage and wipe off afterwards. That's one of these uh, German. Put that out of the way. And what I was going to do is show these numbers, which I've got a huge tray of. So there we are. I've had these done. I had these laser cut myself to be able to use in a game. And I also had some of these for low and high features for altitude as well. And also the game features, if I put these out, the, the game features command pips, which you'd use to place next to an airship and it gives it an extra boost of some kind during the game. So if I pull one of these back over, while you're playing you would assign one of these pips to the airship and in the rules there's four or five, six actually different things you can do. One is use that to initiate the repair when you activate it, or you could give it a boost in movement of a couple of inches, uh, depending on the rule. Uh, you can also increase by adding an extra dice to your, your gunfire for that uh, turn for that airship as well. So you're limited by command pips, you roll for those every, every round that you start, and then you assign them to airships where you think you're going to need them, where you might need extra gunnery or extra boost of speed to get you on. So, yeah, that's a key feature of the rules using these command pips. So back over looking at the iPad, if I pop over to the website, you can see here, this is the Brigade Models website. They're based in Kent in the UK. And there goes an aircraft over the top. You can probably hear that on the camera. but. The rules themselves are listed available on here to purchase, so you can have them ship worldwide. And includes the, the stack card quick reference sheet, which you can download. We have a Facebook page, and then you can see listed there the turn rulers, which I've shown you, you use, and also the official logo dice, which you can buy a set of there. So the quick reference guide is available to download, is also in the rules, but it explains things like the turn sequence, how you make a command roll, which gives you those command pips, which I showed earlier, then the initiative, which you can adjust by assigning command pips to it. So you're spending your command pips to help you gain initiative for that round. 
then you assign any remaining command pips to the uh, airships that are within 30 inches of your capital ship and essentially then you then select and move an element at a time and use the turn ruler and then complete shooting and there's that little guide again to the gun dice and their ranges so the long range you can see up to 30 they hit on a 6 and um, but if you're using the long in the shorter range up to 10 inches they'd hit on 4, 5 or 6 for the main guns just there. So here we are so here we are on the Brigade Models website. If you look in the Air Enough section, it's where you'll find all of the airships and their different nationalities. So if we have a look under Great Britain, you can see the different ships. In fact, the Bembo was one I was showing earlier. And that's one of my paint jobs which I've done on there for, for Tony. That's my ship. That was one of the first ones I was doing as part of writing the rules. I thought I'd better get some airships properly painted up so I did my own airships from there. And Tony does uh, fleet sets as well so you can see all the individual airships listed and then you can do the sort of brand, the Grand British Fleet too and different various packs, Pursuit Pack. Something like the Pursuit Pack would be a good starter actually you can see and with the exchange rate as it is at the moment you can snap up a deal because uh, both the uh, the dollar and the euro uh, are uh, currently devouring sterling like a pac-man and um, as a result it means you can pick these up a bit cheaper than than, uh, than normal so there you go so if I come back out now to show you back on the, uh, the close-in I can take you through a few of my airships that I've got and just some thoughts around how I put them together. So one thing I, I'm always promoting is, which I'll show on this one, is this very small airship here. You can see the small size means that it's a bit of a small fry on a base that size. You could in fact, and again because you can save some money if you do it, you can use these small clear base types as well as long as they've got the, the flat front hex it means you can use that butted up against the movement piece starting to make clutter here and uh, obviously you need it to be facing the right way and I've used magnets on there to do that but you can see again put that up against the side and that allows you to do its its tight turning circle there and move it to the to the side but I like these small airships I think they should be in every game it's worth uh, it's worth having them just because they add colour to a game where you might get one of these, put the last shot in on a, in a, an important small battle against other patrol boats. If it's doing that, it's, uh, it just adds a bit of fun into the game rather than just slogging it out with the larger cruisers and battleships. So here's another one of the German ones. And I use, the, I use brass sheeting to cut out my sail, so that's not paper. I sort of cut and curl them. I detail that in the rule book actually in the painting guide. Again, it just gives them some longevity as well. If you use paper on there, it tends to sort of tear off or flap about. And I like the sort of solid feel of the brass, which I've glued on. Again, I've used various decals on the back here and I think it just adds to the airship. You don't necessarily have specific ones. Obviously if you're doing German it's nice to have the Iron Cross on there which you can see I've got on the uh, top of some of the guns there. So popping over, this is one of the American ones in my in my set. And I've done quite a, a flax scheme but you can see I have the sort of side stripe which I've airbrushed on by doing a sort of red under hull and then a very simple styling on the top with a couple of American flags at the front and I've gone for that great white fleet but as you can see it's nothing compared to uh, Jonathan Rogers uh, images that I showed you earlier of his with all of the the nice um, detail level I do sometimes go for it on the detail uh, as you can see on this one here I believe this is a Brazilian, one of my favourite uh, ships in the range really, but I've added 
extra little lifeboats. I've put some rigging in, which I've used. On there I've used the very fine fishing nylon. And also I've added, what else did I add? Well, I've done the, um, the metal, and although I haven't painted them yet, I have done the metal style on the flags. So there we go. And again, just worth me mentioning now, uh, this is a new rig I've got in the garage in terms of the um, cameras, etc., which means some things may be out of focus, so apologies if that happens, in addition to all the sort of shenanigans I've had, which you may or may not see depending on how I cut them out, but my internet stopped working halfway through and I was trying to show a Brigade Models website, which is probably in there now, but uh, that was a bit of a challenge. And I also moved the, the lighting around on this so you can see some lighting from different angles. This is a British airship, the twin hull. I gave it that aluminium style and I just painted those stripes on the side as well, the idea being uh, that it just represents the sort of ribs, the hull-like ribs underneath the, uh, the airship outer skin. And again, a couple of uh, decals on there. These are sort of large dom, DOMS decals and then a number. I think that was from the Battlefront miniatures for their Flames of War. It was a, num a num set of numbers they did for tanks. And this is a Gundam one on the back. And then I've painted the sort of British colours on the back of that as well. Right, so... That's what I'm going to do. I think I've now done around about uh, 20 minutes of footage and hopefully that gives you a bit of an overview of the, the game. If I flip myself over here, I can actually talk at the camera. There we go. So yeah, thanks very much for hanging on. If you have sat through this entire thing and watched all those uh, small airships, please uh, post if you thought things were out of focus at all at any point. I'm afraid there's a bit of a compromise going on on my wooden stump here in that I've got a, a zoom lens on a fixed focal length camera which is a GoPro and it means it looks great about here um, anywhere else it either blurs or it goes into blurry so you know give me some feedback on that I'm looking for ways that I can deal with that better um, and also if you wanted to see some more things about the game I could do a demo round on a table so there's other things I can get on with and um, hopefully that's it so I've given you the dice rolling I've shown you the cards Oh, and what's coming next? So that was the other feature I remembered. So I've got some more cards to do. I've got to print all the faction cards to be available on War Games Vault, and that's something I'll be doing in the next few weeks. It's taken me a long time due to various job changes and organising my setup here, but that's near to completion. So feedback welcome, and on the rules, if you read them and have a look, um, and you've got some points to make or feedback, I can feed them into the next version that comes out as well. So. I shall sign off and um, put some sounds on again just as I go and hopefully not too annoying in terms of the sounds. But thanks for listening in and I'll see you soon. Cheers, bye. Now I'm going to attempt to fade to black. Here we go, fade to black.